It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this service of worship. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to all who are seeking a church home, who need strength, and who want to follow in the ways of love. Welcome to old and young, to believers and questioners and questioning believers. Whoever you are, whomever you love, Wherever you find yourself on life's journey, we welcome you here. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator. I'm Jonathan Morgan, the Senior Minister of First Congregational Church. And I'm delighted that you have joined us for this service of worship. If you're watching online and want to learn more about our ministry here at 23rd and Harris, please visit our website at FCC.org for more information. I'm especially grateful this morning for Mark Lindbergh, who will be offering this morning's message. I'm so pleased having this opportunity to hear his words of hope and love for all of us. And he'll be lifting up some of the marvelous ministry that is being um, offered here at the church with our young people. I think you're really going to appreciate his words. A couple of um, announcements and a reminder about our safety protocol. Thank you for wearing your face uh, coverings at this time and throughout the service as we seek to protect the most vulnerable in our midst. And as you exit the sanctuary today, <clears throat> please avoid congregating by the entranceway. It just slows things down. If you would like to talk to someone, you may want to go back a bit farther, maybe down the hall or find a room, or even go outside. It's a nice day, I think. Nice enough, anyways, for Oregon. <laughs> if you would like to contribute to the ministry of First Congregational Church, you may drop a donation in the, the um, uh, it looks like a plate back there. And you may drop a donation there, or you may, uh, of course, go on our website or send a check to the church or use the QR code, which is on your bulletin. Try it out, it's kind of fun. So now let us gather together as God's faithful for this time of worship. Welcome everyone. Please join me in the call to worship. Let the radiance of Christ be evident among us. In our songs and our words. In our deepest thoughts and desires. In the youthful and the experienced. The exhausted and the energetic. In the hungry and the scared. We are here together. We join our voices and hearts in prayer.
God of all miracles and all mysteries, how is it that you are the creator of the universe, all that is, and also the creator of each one of us? How is it that you know the movements of the sun and the moon and the stars and also the rhythms of our lives? the joys and the sorrows, the challenges and the gifts, the places of pride and even the shadow of our shame. How do you know all of this? Oh God, when we wonder about our worth, help us to trust. Help us to trust when we wonder about our significance or our ability or if we are loved. Help us to trust when the way before us is unclear or when we are afraid of the future. Help us to trust, dear God, and then to stand, to stand in awe that you are mindful of all of us, that you who created the world created us too and love us. We come again to this day with collective worries and discouragements, 
We grieve over places far away, over the deaths of young ones in Texas on a night that was supposed to be filled with music and joy. We worry about the human ability and endurance to care for refugees all over the world. We grieve over violence and bloodshed, both far away and so close to home that it has touched our own community. Loving God, we pray for those who face a serious illness. And we give thanks for people who work in places of healing. We ask that you sustain those burdened with the daily care of another, a loved one. And we ask that you wrap your tender arms around those who grieve, who experience what seems like a long path of loneliness. Bind our community of faith more closely together so that in even greater measure, we would be Christ's hands and heart to the world and people around us. And we thank you for all your many blessings and for the gift of Jesus, who came to us to proclaim your love. Love given not because of our ability or intelligence or perceived worth, but given instead out of grace. And so we pray all of this in the name of Christ, saying together the prayer Jesus taught to those closest to him, saying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for that beautiful anthem, choir. I'm digging this new setup. It's like amazing surround sound. <laughs> and I hope that as we leave the sanctuary today, we might remember those four words because being rooted in love begins with here I am, Lord. So thank you for reminding us of that. Grace and peace to you, my friends, and to all those online watching today. Our scripture focus today is a prayer for the Ephesians. And I'll read this morning from the New International Version, modified for gender inclusivity. Let's hear these words now from Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason I kneel before the Creator, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of God's glorious riches, God may strengthen you with power through God's Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. To know this love that surpasses all knowledge. We know something about love here at FCC, don't we? Over the last month, we've heard the Reverend Jessica Shine share with us that God is resolved in claiming us as beloved. We learned how important it is for us to know that we belong. And we will not soon forget the spectacular Holy Spirit moments shared by our elders as we saw how the Holy Spirit moves through the power of love. The following Sunday, we heard the Reverend Dean Cokier insist that we are called to love no matter what. And last Sunday, the Reverend Don Gall added another dimension to his reflection on the living saints, saying that we are to love no matter who. <laughs> Did I get that right, Don? Close enough. <laughs> yes, we can say something about this love because we've known it to be true in the deepest wells of our being. And because we've encountered the Holy Spirit in one another. But today I want to ask, how is it that our youth come to know that love? Or as Paul asks in Romans 10, 14, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? I've worked with youth in some capacity for most of my adult life. And I've been blessed to serve this church as youth minister now in my fifth year in that role. I can tell you that never in all that time have I seen the levels of anxiety, stress, and fear as I've witnessed this year. And it makes perfect sense. One of the greatest challenges of this time has been creating and sustaining meaningful connections with one another. In Ohana Youth Groups, we've been faithfully doing this work of connection and have seen the fruits of our labor and the ways that we hold each other up. Our youth at FCC are to be commended on their resilience, their perseverance, their willingness to show up. And it's not just a few of them either. We're seeing more than 40 youth actively participating in our youth ministry, with another 27 currently in the Our Whole Lives program. And all this has been online and while meeting outside with masks on. There's clearly a yearning for connectedness. And we're so blessed by the gifts that each of our amazing youth bring with them. And yet, I think it's important for you to know that they're hurting. Many of you know what I'm saying. I know this because we've spoken through tears with one another far too often in recent days. In a recent activity, we asked the youth to draw a portrait of themselves as a planet. We then asked them to consider what's in their orbit. 
It was a chance to take an inventory of our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual states. We asked them to consider including other planets and celestial bodies in their systems. The drawings they came up with were outstanding. We have a lot of artistic gifts in our midst, for sure. And yet, there was a striking common theme. In many of the drawings, a prominent feature was a massive black hole, often representing something they had fear around. Whether it be school, the pandemic, difficult friendships, a good number of these illustrations also had giant meteors or asteroid belts that were prepared to strike their planet at any moment. It was informative of where they find themselves today. Yes, many are back in school now. However, since everyone is wearing masks, the visual cues we used to take for granted are simply missing. Did they just smile at my joke? Does she think I'm funny? Is he my friend? And this comes at a developmental time in their lives where affirmation and belonging are especially critical to formation of self-identity and strong self-esteem. Well, in their drawings, our youth also included brilliant stars and beautiful planets, often representing their family and friends, and all of you. That was one of the joyful pieces of the exercise. Their drawings have stuck with me in recent weeks. They motivate me to reach deeper and to be ever more resolute in the grounding and rooting in love. Our youth need to know this love of which the author speaks. They need to know how wide and long and high and deep it is. Today I bring you this message because we are the ones to share this love that surpasses knowledge with them. And my emphasis is on the we. Because if not us, then who? It's not happening out there, folks. Youth today are bombarded with an unprecedented level of messaging about the value of material wealth, physical beauty, and success, about how you stack up against your peers, and how well you compete. But where are they hearing the message of loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself? Where else in our culture are they shown Christ's way of opting for and not against one another? People often speak of youth representing the future of the church, but they are the now of the church. They are co-creators and conspirators in the divine work of the church. And we are all the light bearers. Your voice and witness are imperative for our youth ministries, serving on our family life outreach and advocacy team, guiding and accompanying us when we prepare youth worships, when we go on retreats, when we engage in service projects, when we hold youth group meetings each week. Your energy is needed for us to grow and sustain those roots. But are we prepared to make that commitment? If we want faith to have relevance in the increasingly complex lives of our young people, then we'll need everyone, not just parents, but also grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, indeed, all of us. Each one of you are the way we bring the relevance of the word into their lives. Our youth, our youth need to know that they are loved from all eternity. They need to know that their lives are of tremendous significance. They need to know without any doubt that they belong, regardless of who they are. Take a moment now, if you will, and journey back in time with me. Maybe close your eyes if that helps you to envision. Take a couple deep breaths. Think back upon your own lives, all the way back to your childhood. Begin with one of your earliest memories of knowing love in your life. You with me? Okay, now think about your faith journey. How did you come to know God's love in your life? What were those pivotal moments, those turning points on your path? Were there any people besides you involved? Did you know someone older? 
who took you under their wing. Maybe you had a teacher, a coach, a pastor, a youth group leader, someone who came into your life and showed you love, someone who claimed you, someone who showed you that you belong, that you matter. Okay, you can open your eyes now. This remembering looks different for each of us. But how did you experience that love? How did you come to know that sense of belonging? For our youth, these experiences of God's love oftentimes come through all of you. Because this community of the church, this Ohana family, is not like the world out there. This is a place of counter-cultural revolution. This is a place where the first are last and the last are first. Where else can they experience several generations of humanity in one setting? Where else will people open their hearts to them without judging, condemning, and criticizing? In our prevalent culture where the pursuits of materialism and achievement are lifted up as the highest values, how will these youth hear any other message? My friends, this church community is vital. Our youth ministries are vital. Do we have room in our hearts for them, regardless of what they look like or how they behave? Are we ready to love like that? Because it matters. Last year, one of our young men that has now gone on to college shared in worship about the importance of FCC youth ministries in his life. He related how when he entered as a freshman, he was very much on the outside looking in. He felt uncertain and rejected by his peers. But then he shared with us how he was transformed by this community. Weekly youth group meetings, the Sierra Service Project, and our people in particular had a strong impact on his life. His roots began to grow. And as a graduating senior, he had come to an entirely different place, a place of belonging, a place where he now had the courage to look around to youth on the periphery and invite them in. He sought to share his experience of the whole wide, long, deep, and high love of God through the Holy Spirit. He became rooted in love. And Jesus is clear. Those who approach God with the faith and humility of children will enter the kingdom of heaven. As Sarah Augustine reflects, that humility is acknowledging that I am not separate from creation. I am a part of a web of life. This mutual dependence is a gift. Life is a gift. Our choosing to follow in the ways of Jesus means that we choose our youth and we choose to share the message that life is gift rooted in love. Because our children stand for something. They stand for the kind of dependence and helplessness and need and insufficiency and faith that is required of adults to enter the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, to such as these belongs the kingdom. I'll close with a story about how love has the power to create and sustain roots. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were about to make our way back to the cabin that night after our second campfire of the week. The scents of cedar and fir mixed with smoke and lingered on the breeze. As the coals gave off their last warmth, we prepared to extinguish the fire. And that's when he came over and asked me in a quiet, almost sheepish voice, Mark, can I ask you something? If there is a God, then why is my dad always so mean to me? I don't think there can really be a God. I mean, how could there be? Wouldn't God do something about my dad? Well, we had a good talk that night. He asked about my own belief in God, and I shared with him my understanding that we are all loved by a power greater than our human comprehension. 
that he wasn't convinced. He still just couldn't wrap his mind around how a God that loves him would leave him on the streets, often with an empty stomach, let alone the other ways in which he suffered. But that week went on, and throughout that week, he was paired up with a different one of our high school youth each day. And each day, he was surrounded by love and held in grace in the midst of the old growth forest right there along Milk Creek. Each day, he learned that maybe he did matter. Maybe people did like him. Maybe he had something to offer the world after all. To this day, I'm not sure when it happened. I don't know if it was during one of our focus on circles where we share positive insights about each other, if it was while we were fishing for crawdads, if it might have been on a walk with one of our youth, or perhaps it was a cumulative experience. What I do know is that on that final hot day of summer fun camp, when we had to say goodbye at First Place Family Center, and send the children back to their living situations with their families. At the very last minute, he came running over to me, leaned into my ear, and whispered, You know, Mark, I think you're right. I think God is real.
being rooted and established in love, may we have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Go now in peace with love. Amen.